Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, Microsoft has launched Windows 11. They've told us all about it. It's got some interesting features, including the ability to run Android apps. Some people have read in the comments in various places are actually not looking forward to it. But here's the kicker. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you probably can't install it anyway. I've got seven PCs here in this house and every single one of them won't upgrade to Windows 11. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Windows 11 has been announced and along with it is the list of system requirements, what your PC needs to have to be able to install Windows 11. And there's even a handy checker tool, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work, but we'll forgive Microsoft for that for today, that can tell you whether your machine can be upgraded to Windows 11. Now let's start with the simple requirements. You need a dual core 64-bit processor. Okay, fair enough, that's probably most people have got that. If you're still running XP and you didn't upgrade to Windows 7 or 8 or whatever, then don't worry about Windows 11 either. You need 64 gigs of internal storage. That's probably okay. There's probably some low-end laptop somewhere that came with 32 gigabytes of eMMC. So those ones may be excluded. But let's say that's a very, very tiny portion of the PCs that are in the world. Now, next, there are a few controversial items that certainly have been quite confusing. The first one is you need a security module, the TPM uh, module inside of your PC. Now, when I ran the tool for checking that first of all on my PC, it said I can't upgrade because there is no TPM. So then I went hunting around and I found out the, in many, many motherboards, even from machines that are relatively old, let's say within the last uh, five, six, seven, eight years, they may have TPM built into the motherboard. So I went hunting around inside the motherboard in the BIOS, found the right settings, turned it on, and then when I went back into Windows, it was able to tell me that it has got a security processor, so that's okay. But then it said, ah, but you don't support secure boot. So secure boot is a way of making sure you're booting the OS that you think you are and that some kind of malware hasn't come in, tried to insert itself early into the boot process, a rootkit, that kind of thing, and that it's trusted, that the OS you're booting is trusted. To do that, you need to be able to have a few features supported by your PC. It needs to be able to support UEFI as opposed to the old kind of standard BIOS. And the hard disk that you're booting from mustn't be using the old type of master boot record partition table, but a GPT one. So again, I ran the test tool. It said, no, you don't support secure boot. So back into the BIOS, I found the thing that enables secure boot, and then it wouldn't boot my machine because I didn't have the uh, master boot record converted to a GPT. I then went looking around. There's a nice tool you can use. I converted then my boot drive from master boot record over to GPT. And I thought, right, this is it. This now is going to be absolutely great. I can upgrade to Windows 11. But alas, no, when I tried the checking tool again, what happened? I don't have a supported processor. Now, this is really the key point. This is the point where Microsoft have been like completely crazy. They've basically drawn a line in the sand and said, if you've got a processor before this date, you can't have Windows 11. If you've got a processor after this date, you can have it. Regardless of whether you've got a TPM, regardless of whether you support secure boot, regardless of whether you've got you know, 64 gigs of memory, regardless of whether it's an octa-core processor running at 3.5 gigahertz, doesn't matter any of that. Just there's a line that they've drawn. What's that line? Basically, it's got to be a, an Intel i3, i5, i7 uh, core processor from the eighth generation. So that's only, you know, a few years ago now, two, three, four years ago, maybe. And all, or a Ryzen, for example, the Ryzen 3, the Ryzen 5, that's a third generation. And for example, the Ryzen 3 3000 series was launched in 2019. So that was only you know, two years ago. So really there's this kind of arbitrary line in the sand. Now, it just turns out that I've got some fairly decent machines here uh, and uh, AMD, I've got Intel ones, sixth generation, seventh generation uh, core machine. I've got a Ryzen 5, but it's a first generation of Ryzen 5. And so my main machine that I edit these videos on, which has got a Ryzen 5 1600 in it, I've got 24 gigs of memory, I've got uh, SSDs, I've got M2 modules, of course I've got Intel, I've got three monitors attached to it, I've got a decent graphics card, Windows 11 is not for me. 
as I said, none of the machines in my house. I've got laptops, I've got desktops. They're used by different people here in the household, particularly with the pandemic. There's been lots of online stuff. They get used every day. They work absolutely fine. But Microsoft has arbitrarily decided, regardless of whether they support Secure Boot, regardless of whether they have a TPM module, you can't install Windows 11 on it because they said so. And that's it. They just said so. We want to remove the barriers. So just think about the amount of e-waste that can be created. If I had to take these seven PCs and laptops and literally throw them all away because Microsoft has drawn a line in the sand and said, no, your seventh generation i7 laptop with a good uh, 1060 Ti NVIDIA graphics card in it and a terabyte of hard disk is no longer any good, well, that's just, it's just, it's just ludicrous. It's, it's criminal almost that Microsoft can get away with saying such a thing. Operating systems and devices should mold to our needs, not the other way around. So, of course, what's going to happen is actually one of two things. The first is I'm just going to keep on using Windows 10. And I'm going to be really upset that I can't try out features like running Android apps on my desktop because I don't have a desktop to support it. And I don't have the money to replace all of that desktop just because Microsoft said so. And so I'm going to keep using Windows 10. It's supported until 2025. And that's what's going to happen now in 2025. I'm sure I'll still be using quite a few of these laptops. Maybe by then I will have saved some money. Maybe I would have thought about how I can upgrade my main PC, maybe one or two others. No way I'm going to be upgrading all seven. So the others are going to remain unsupported on an unsupported version of Windows 10, which of course leads to problems like potential security problems, malware problems, and then of course other problems related with app incompatibility, things not being supported and so on. So really, Microsoft are basically come along today and they've slapped me around the face and said, Gary, thank you for all the years that you've been using our operating system. Thank you that you've been, you know, with us since Windows 3.1. But today, sorry, you're not a worthy customer anymore. Throughout its history, Windows has been a democratizing force for the world. And of course, part of that, of course, is because Microsoft don't sell Windows anymore. That you know, it's not an upgrade. The upgrade's free. The upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 8, it's all free. So really, all they're interested in is new PCs. New PCs that are made, they've got contracts with Dell and HP and Lenovo and all these other big companies, and they get a chunk of money every time a new PC is bought that comes with Windows 10 pre-installed in it. That's where their money comes from. They don't care about the people that are getting the free upgrades. They either get it or they don't. Doesn't change their bottom line in terms of dollars. And so there we have it. Because of an arbitrary line drawn by Microsoft, none of the machines in my house will support Windows 11. And I'm thinking that if that's true for me, then that must be true for literally millions of people around the world. People that don't buy a new PC every year, people that don't buy a new PC every two, three years. And in fact, do you know what's even worse than that? If you go today onto Amazon.com or Newegg or whatever the leading retailer of electronics is in your country, you'll be able to buy a PC that won't run Windows 11. There'll be cheap ones. There'll be, you know, with our, our i5, i7 processors from a few years ago, three, four years ago, and you can't upgrade. So in fact, you could have bought a new PC only last week and actually today you found out that it doesn't actually support Windows 11. A lot of the i5 processors, the i5, i3, the i7 processors from Intel are still being manufactured even in their sixth generation, even in their seventh generation. I went to the website and had a look. So these chips are available. You can buy pro, uh, PCs with these processors in the day, refurbished ones, secondhand ones. There's a whole market there that Microsoft have basically said, nope, we're not interested in that anymore. Microsoft, I think you should be ashamed. Well, there you have it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Do tell me in the comments below, what were the results of you trying Microsoft's uh, PC health check tool? Are you able to upgrade to Windows 11? Do you think this arbitrary line that they've drawn in the sand is good or bad? I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <music>